Job was in an awful mess. He didn't ask to be there. He didn't, I'm sure he didn't want to be there. But it was because Satan well, showed up in the presence of the Lord and the Lord asked him, he says, where you been? Well, he said, I've been running to and fro throughout the whole earth. And the Lord asked him, he said, well, have you considered my servant Job? How that there's none like him on the face of me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I've considered him. But you've got a hedge all around him, so I can't touch him or I can't test him. You take the hedge down and I'll get Job to curse you to your face. Okay. You go ahead. And you know the story. Job lost all. He was a very rich man. He lost all of his inheritance. He lost everything. You remember the people coming in and say, well, the, the Sabians and all the rest of it come. They took all your camels. They took all your sheep. They took everything that you had. And, and I'm the only one alive that escaped with my life to tell you that you've lost this, 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 and this. At the end of it, Job had lost all of his inheritance. And the last thing that, that, that happened, his ten children were having a, a feast at the older brother's home. Something happened. The home was destroyed. All ten of his children were dead. Well, that finishes that. You can, can you see the predicament that Job is in? He's lost everything that he's had. He's lost, now he's lost his children. And the last, one of the last things is that Job's wife says, why don't you just curse God and die? I mean, he said him, and then the, Satan afflicted him. The Lord allowed Satan to afflict his body. He said, you can afflict his body, but you cannot take his life. Now, Job didn't know that any of this was going on. Sometimes we get predicaments that the Lord allows and we don't even know. We, we stop fussing and fuming and getting angry and all of these, these efforts, all these feelings, emotions come in when everything goes wrong. And Job, I'm sure, is dealing with all of this. I mean, who in their right mind don't deal if you've lost ten of your children, all of your children, if that isn't an emotional stress? My Lord, that, that's hard. Uh, especially he didn't, he didn't know that the Lord, God of the universe, had allowed Satan to take that stuff from him. So all of the emotions are, are set in attack. Are set in motion, I should say. His life is up. Is it any wonder that he he that he cursed the day that he was born? I wish I'd never been born. I wish I'd died in my mother's womb because it's too hard. So the emotional factor sets in. He's dealing with all of these issues. Then God said, "Well, you can afflict his body, but you can't touch his soul." All of a sudden, the boils started breaking out all over his body. I don't know if you've, if you've never had a boil. I, you know, I kind of feel bad for you. I've had quite a few boils in my in my younger years as, as a child. I had uh, numbers of boils, and to me, there was nothing any worse. Uh, the, I have found out that the only thing I found out worse than a boil uh, is a kidney stone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they are nasty and they are painful, I mean to tell you. So Job was dealing with uh, the boils. It didn't say that he dealt with a kidney stone, but uh, when you have as many boils as Job had, uh, it was probably worse than a kidney stone. I mean to tell you, I mean, he, he was in bad shape. So Job, having, not having seen all this, is now in a predicament. He is in a mess. Anyone agree with that? He's, he's now in a mess. He don't know what to do. He's prayed that there's no answer that comes until God gets ready to do that. His three friends come. They, they, they accuse Job. Some were saying, well, Job, this has happened and it's all your fault. And Job would look at his own life and he said, but I haven't done a thing wrong. I, I've done nothing to bring
bring this mess on me. I've lived holy and pure before God. I've not been involved in sin. I, I've tried to keep my life clean. and There's no reason that I should be suffering like this. We probably never dealt with anything like that, but sometimes things happen when there's no, there's no, there's no reasoning uh, to it. And it doesn't seem like the Lord is being fair at all. When all hell lets loose and you haven't done anything wrong, it doesn't seem like the Lord's being fair. So Job finds himself in an awful predicament, a mess. He's dealing with financial loss. He's dealing with the loss of his family. He's dealing with his wife, and, and, and you can't really blame her. <clears throat> she can't figure anything out any more than he can. And he has a lot to say. Then you've got these three friends that come along. And some of them are blaming him and telling him, well, it's all your fault. Hey, you idiot, I didn't do anything wrong. What's the matter with you? Why are you telling me that? And for, for 36, 37 chapters, they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm going to start reading in the 38th chapter. And God took Job through some of the same things that he took me through when I couldn't figure my life out at all. And I'd just like you to listen. God asked a bunch of questions. One of the, one of the uh, uh, three of you, one of his three friends, Elihu, he, he stressed God's sovereignty over all of nature as a reminder of his sovereignty over our lives. We, we talked about hope. And we've got to believe that God is in control. He directs, he preserves, and maintains his created order. God is in charge of every part of our lives. Every minute of the day, God is in control. I, I don't believe we'll I don't believe we're going to come into peace until we accept that God's in charge of every bit of our lives. Although we can't see it, Godly is divinely governing the moral and the political affairs of people as well. God's in charge of the United States. He has not lost control of the Obamacare and everything else. He's not lost control because we seemingly are, are out of control. God's still large and he is in charge of the political scene. By spending time observing the majestic and the intricate parts of God's creation, we can be reminded of his power in every aspect of our lives. I don't know if we dare say it or not, but God is in charge every minute of the day in every part of our lives. He knows exactly when to do it and how to do it. And you can't really come to that conclusion until you read the last few chapters of the book of Job. Knowing Job's condition. Knowing where he was. Knowing the mess that he was in. We're going to come to understand. You've got to... You can't read it without understanding God's in charge of every part of my life. He knows when you need to take a shower. I mean, He knows every hair on your head has been numbered. Everything about it, every part, every minute of the day is in the Lord's charge. He's in charge of our lives if we want it. If we accepted Him as Lord of our lives, Every move that we make. I told him, I said, Lord, I think, you're, I, I think I'm keeping you busy down on the Dobbin Road with everything that's wrong with the house. He said, I already know what's wrong with the house. I, I already know what needs to be fixed. I already know how much money it's going to take. Now, I know if your car is going to start this afternoon. I know all about the tires. I know every, every snowflake is in my child. Every snowflake that is falling today, is he know, already knows about. 
about them, every one. He's ordered them to come. He's in charge. And you're going to find in the book of Job that God even, well, we, we've got to really read it to find out. Let's read it. I want to start in chapter 38, and I'm going to read from the Living Bible today, okay? Sometimes it's King James, but today I want, if you, if you can follow along, <clears throat> it says, and then the Lord, verse 1 of chapter 38, says, then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. God was talking to him right out of his storm. God was talking to him. Man, bang! While you're right in the middle of the storm, this is what God wants to say. In the middle of your storm, God wants you to know, hey, I'm in charge. You're not. I'm speaking. And God, out of who is in the Lord answered him right out of the whirlwind. Okay, let me, let me start reading at verse number 2. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Listen to God. This is God talking back to Job after they've thrown this stuff back and forth. He went, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Wow. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you know so much, who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? You'd have to almost start saying, I don't know. I don't know. What supports its foundations? And who laid its cornerstone? As the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who kept the sea inside its boundaries as it burst from the womb? And as I closed, clothed it with clouds and wrapped it in thick darkness, for I locked it behind barred gates, limiting its shores. I said, this far and no farther will you come. Here your proud waves must stop. Job, have you ever commanded the morning to appear? <laughs> uh, nope. And caused the dawn to rise in the east? Have you made daylight spread to the ends of the earth to bring an end to the night's wickedness? As the light approaches, the earth takes shape like clay pressed beneath a seal. It is robed in brilliant colors. The light disturbs the, the wicked and stops the arm that is raised in violence. Have you explored the springs from which the seas come? No. Have you explored their depths? Did you know where the gates of death are located? Have you seen the gates of utter gloom? Do you realize the extent of the earth? Tell me about it if you know. Where does light come from? And where does darkness go? Can you take each to its home? Do you know how to get there? But of course you know all of this. For you were born before it was all created. And you are so very experienced. Yeah, right. Have you visited the storehouses of the snow? Or seen the storehouses of hail? <laughs> I don't think so. He said, I have reserved them as weapons for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. I've read stories in the Bible that the Lord killed a bunch of the armies with hailstones. That's right. Where'd they come from? Where is the home? Or where is the path to the source of light? Where is the home of the east wind? Who created the channel for the 
torrents of rain? Who laid out the path for the lightning? I don't know of an engineer yet that has set up lightning. Wow. <laughs> Who makes the rain fall on barren land in a desert where no one lives? Who sends rain to satisfy the parched ground and make the tender grass spring up? Does the rain have a father? Who gives birth to the dew? Who is the mother of the ice? Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? For the water turns to ice as hard as rock, and the surface of the water freezes. Can you direct the movement of the stars, binding the cluster of plagues or loosening the cords of Orion? Can you direct the sequence of the seasons or guide the bear with her cubs across the heavens? Do you know the law of the universe? Can you use them to regulate the earth? I don't think so. Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? You might have an Indian war dance, but you've got <laughs> He said, can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Can you make lightning appear and cause it to strike as you direct? Who gives intuition to the heart and instinct of the mind? Who is wise enough to count all the clouds? Who can tilt the water jars of heaven when the parched ground is dry and the soil is hardened into clods? Can you stop prey for a lioness? and satisfy the young lion's appetites as they lie in their dens or crouch in their thicket? Who provides food for the ravens when their young cry out to God and wander about in hunger? Wow. Mm -hmm. The Lord's challenges continue in chapter 39. Says, do you know when the wild goats give birth? Have you watched as deer are born in the wild? Do you know how many months they carry their young? Are you aware of the time of their delivery? They crouch, they crouch down to give birth to their young and deliver their offspring. Their young grow up in open fields and leave home and never return. Who gives the wild donkey its freedom? Who untied its ropes? I have placed it in the wilderness. Its home is the wasteland. It hates the noise of the city and has no driver to shout at it. To shout at it. The mountains are its pasture land, where it searches for every blade of grass. Will the wild ox consent to being tamed? Will it spend the night in the stall? Can you hitch a wild ox to a plow? Will it plow a field for you? Given its strength, can you trust it? Can you leave and trust the ox to do your work? Can you rely on it to bring home your grain or deliver it to, to your threshing floor? The ostrich flaps her wings grandly. But they are no match for the feathers of the stork. She lays her eggs on top of the earth, letting them be warmed in the dust. She doesn't worry that a fool might, a foot might crush them, or a wild animal might destroy them. She is high.